All right. Welcome to the finals of the first main Invitational Scratch Tournament of the 2013-2014 season. Um, I'm James Goulding. I have Jimmy Clark here doing color commentary for the finals. Say hello, Jimmy. How are we doing, guys? We've got a class of the Titans here. The last two years uh, player of the year with last year's reigning champion Joe Ramsell as our top seed. Joe Colford, who is a two-time player of the year, um, was taken down by Joe Ramsell last year starting our Starting it off because he wants his spot back by looks of it. Yeah, he uh, threw a great in the semifinal match. Um, we'll run down our top four in a minute, but that was a great shot by uh, um, Joe Colcord. Starting the match out with his uh, IQ Tour Pearl. Um, he used that the last match in the semifinal match to advance to the finals. We'll just run down our top four real quick. Uh, in our first match today, we had uh, fourth seeded uh, Jerry Donna taking on third seeded James Ward. Jerry won that match 251 to 209. And then uh, Jerry Donna bowled against our uh, number uh, two seed, uh, Joe Colcord. And Joe Colcord took Jerry down in that match 225 to 170 uh, to set up our uh, final match uh, with our top two qualifiers, Joe Ramsell the third, uh, top seed today against Joe Colcord. Uh, take nothing away from Jerry. Jerry Bull was our top qualifier after four. He uh, fell into a little transition troubles and maybe even a little steam run out of his legs here today. Uh, he was 904 for four games today, the only guy to go plus 100. He isn't bowling any leagues this year. He's actually looking to move to Florida, but he's still leaving a statement and leaving his impression left to me. Oh, good cover there by Joe Ramsdell the third. Uh, went Brooklyn on his first shot. Looks like he's got a a little bit of early ball motion on 22, might have to either move in or maybe go to a ball down to something with a little uh, less aggressive cover still. Yeah, today, James, we bowled on uh, the Sunset Strip. Uh, it's not quite sport compliant, but it's far from easy. Played pretty challenging. Uh, I struggled myself, probably more personal than the shot, shot problems. But uh, it's definitely not something that was very easy. If you could do what you were trying to do, you could make it look easy. But uh, next game definitely could bite you in the butt. Yeah, and just to uh, touch on what Jimmy said, um, the shot was there. Uh, it's a 3.33 to 1 ratio. Definitely a lot harder than a house shot. Not quite sport compliant, but um, basically, if you could hit your mark and throw the ball good, you could throw some numbers. We had a couple games in the 260s, had a couple in the 270s, had plenty of games in the 150s and 160s too. Um, not, from my experience, you know, I threw a couple games in the 170s, threw a good game, threw a 247 one game. Really felt like I threw it well, but man, when you when you threw it bad, you definitely paid the price. Yeah, you watch these guys today. They're uh, they're lined up. They're ready. They're ready to play on this. Whether it's hard or easy, they're ready to play. They can uh, they throw good shots. Yeah, great shot there by Joe. Um, you know, this is basically the same line he was playing in the semifinal match when he won uh, over Jerry Donna. Yeah, he's using that IQ tour. It kind of keeps the ball a little cleaner through the front, so it's saving some energy, as you can see in that last shot. He's throwing some pins around. Like said, the pins moving side to side is great for carry. As much as it's great to see the pins blow right straight back in the pit, uh, so the pins moving side to side, they hit pins. And they knock them over, you get some stuff there, some lucky breaks sometimes. I'm not saying nothing against Joe. That shot there was a great shot. And I'm sure we'll see plenty of those this match here. Yeah, big thing is if you can carry some off hits, um, you know, we know these guys can pound the hole as good as anyone, but if you can get a break where, you know, maybe you came in half pocket, maybe you kind of came in light, didn't quite get it off your hand, but if you can get some of those off hits to carry, that'll turn your 205 into, you know, a 235 in a hurry. But um, unfortunately, this is bowling, and you still get, just like Joe got, a nice solid 10 pin. Uh, very frustrating. Uh, Joe being a great spare shooter. So. I'm looking at a spare here, and I think uh, between the two guys, we have Joe and Joe, and their spare games are twice as solid as their strike ball. Great cover there by Colford. Um, good time for us to run down the rest of the qualifiers today. Um, we're at Spare Time Recreation in Augusta. Uh, just like to send a shout out thanks to a few of our sponsors, uh, Brunswick Bowling, who uh, donates a raffle ball to each tournament. Uh, this month's raffle ball was the uh, Brunswick uh, Aura Mystic. Uh, great high-end ball, hybrid cover, uh, real strong ball. That was won today by Dave Perry. And I'd like to thank uh, John Gavoy of Bowl Pro Sales. They donate knockout ball cleaner to each tournament. Um, and our tournament winner today of the knockout ball cleaner was Jerry Donna, who uh, actually was in our top four today.
And I would like to thank Moore's Pro Shop and Scott Moore for sponsoring the Bowl of the Year competition. Um, we run a season-long Bowl of the Year points race. And um, right now, whoever wins this tournament is going to take the driver's seat on that points race, Jimmy. And it's only fitting that it's our last two, the last two years of uh, Bowler of the Years that are uh, fighting for the top spot. Very fitting, very, very great bowl this year. And it's even better to have a lefty-righty matchup. I would like to add that Joe Colcord was the only right-hander to make the top four. Yeah, yeah, uh, three of the top four. Uh, lefty field, lefty field uh, did really well today. And I believe we actually had uh, four lefties out of the top nine and five righties. So, um, you know, the left side definitely had a good look today as long as you could hit your mark and stay clean through the ball. And there's one that goes through the face on Joe. Speaking of not staying clean on the ball, looks like he just grabbed that one at the bottom a little. And it doesn't take much. Um, the sport shots, and I know I know this wasn't quite a sport shot, but the sport shots do think two, two things to you. They take away your misroom and make you a little uncomfortable. So the guys that can stay out of their own head and, and execute what they're trying to do makes a big difference. All right, so I'm just going to run through the rest of the top nine. Our uh, ninth place uh, finisher today was uh, actually a female bowler, Emily Brigham. She shot a 830 after her four games and then a 1009 for her uh, five game total. And our eighth, uh, eighth place finisher today was uh, Jason Spaulding. He was 857 after four and he finished with a 1015 for his five game total. Uh, seventh place was our first youth bowler to ever cash in a uh, main invitational scratch tournament. I'm going to add to that. I mean, it's incredible. We, we offer the SMART program through this tournament to let the youths get a little more look at what it's like to be competitive and bowl in the hard, the tougher challenge shots and compete with the upper echelon of bowlers. And Nate was the only junior to participate today in this tournament. That was incredible to see him bowl the way he did and to make the cut, to be the first junior bowler to make the cut. We've had a couple juniors that have bowled in this tournament with not as much success as Nate's had today. And again, my congratulations go out to Nate Harwiski for bowling as well as he did. Yeah, great job, Nate. Um, you know, so Nate gets that, the money from the tournament. He gets seventy-five dollars put right into his smart account. Use those funds when he goes to college. You know, help buy books, whatever. You know, this tournament. Um, you know, we're trying to find the brightest and best, not only of the, the adult scratch bowlers in, in the northern New England, but also any youth bowlers that want to earn extra scholarship money for school. You can make up to three hundred to three hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, for a tournament uh, in scholarship funds if you win the tournament. So it is a great chance for these kids to, to really get some exposure to not only tough lane conditions, but to make some money for school at the same time. And this is another way to practice and uh, hone in their skills for the Junior Gold Tournament, which is uh, a huge, huge tournament for the juniors. Uh, great scholarship opportunities. And i got to add that uh, Nate was actually our low qualifier in the ninth position and had the fourth highest game at 202 during the roll-off uh, round-robin match. And uh, which bump came up in seventh place again? I can't uh, can't say it enough. Great bowling today, Nate. Yeah. So Nate ended up finishing seventh with a 10.24 five game total, and um, sixth place um, was Wayne Naples, who um, shot a 8.23 for his four game total, and then. Uh, with the position round game, uh, went to 10:37. Wayne actually moved from eighth after four games all the way to six after five games. And then uh, the bowler who just missed our top four roll-offs was Rick Campbell. Rick shot an 8.67 for four games and then a 10.64 for his five-game total. So congratulations to the five through nine qualifiers. Yeah, Rick's one of our great bowlers. Uh, uh, great bowlers in the state. He's an old gentleman. He's in our senior. He was actually just at the senior masters this past year. He's always in it. He's just very, very solid, very consistent. Good spare game. I mean, can't emphasize how much spares are on these tough shots. It's incredible. Absolutely, Jimmy. Um, and like we said, you know, these two bowlers here, I mean, you see how evenly matched they are. I'm sure three frames are even. Right now, um, you know, uh, Ramsdale's got a one pin lead. That's only if he strikes him this ball. Anything less than a strike, um, Colcourt can take over in the middle. And actually, with that shot now, Joe Colcourt is actually taking a two pin advantage here. Uh, this is going to be a match that we'll see come down to the, to the final frames. Uh, these guys are both evenly matched. I can't give an advantage to either one. There's no line that looks better than the other, and it's, I think it's just going to come down to execution today. The bowler that stays clean and makes the takes advantage of any extra carry and uh, avoids the big mishaps will be the guy that takes, that, takes the title today. First place prize today is $330. Second place pays $250. I'll run down what the rest of the bowlers got. Jerry Donna finished in third place in $180. James Ward, fourth with 140. 
Brett Campbell fifth with 105. Wayne Naples made $85 to six. Uh, Nate Harzuski, who we spoke about, the junior bowler, gets $75 into his smart fund for seven. Uh, Jason Spaulding made $65 for eight. And Emily Brigham took home $55. Uh, the, lone, the lone woman qualifier today. Yes, we've, had a, we've had a few women qualify, Jimmy. Actually, uh, Mallory Nutting, your girlfriend, actually, had the last tournament last year. Yes, money. she did. She made the she made her first her first tournament. She made the cut. So now Emily has become the third woman to make the cut. We'll have to give uh, Sarah Pelletier as our lone uh, victor of the Miss tournament qualified in Lewiston, I believe, and ended up winning that tournament on a very demanding shot. Uh, so it's definitely a kudos to the girls that come out and bowl. Uh, it's great to see the girls, the juniors, everyone. Uh, this is the bowlers that are looking to get better. They're looking for the competition, and uh, it's out there. Come out and bowl. This is, this is a great tournament. Yeah, and actually our next tournament's going to be on October 13th. We're going to be up at Spare Time Recreation Center in Waterville, Maine. Um, Check-in time is 9 o'clock a.m. The bowling starts at 10 o'clock. Um, we have just a four-game scratch qualifier, and um, we run $5 brackets, $10 high game pot. We uh, raffle off. Uh, we're going to raffle off another brand new Brunswick Aura Mystic bowling ball at the next tournament. Um, all the proceeds from the ball raffle go right into the prize fund. So um, the more people we get entering, the more money goes right back to the bowlers. Um, open competition. Anyone's anyone can bowl. Youth bowlers, adult bowlers, women, men. It doesn't matter. If you want to bowl on some tough lane conditions, because we don't bowl on house shots, we bowl on stuff all the way from sport all the way to you know four to five to one ratios. Um, we bowl on a little bit of everything. So come out and bowl and test your skill. Uh, yeah, it was great this tournament. We actually got to see uh, five different women bowlers out here this tournament. It was incredible. Joe with a little unfortunate break leaving the four pin here, but uh, by staying clean, this match is going to stay tight. Uh, I don't think we're going to see the big five and six bagger runs in this game. Uh, the lanes of transition, which has made them a little tougher. The heads have definitely gotten spotty. The back ends are not nearly as crisp as they were to start. So I don't think we're going to see the big games that we saw earlier today. So as long as these bowlers can stay patient, which with the two bowlers we have here, that's, that's their game. Patience, fair shooting, and uh, shot execution. Just as we say that, Joe Coldboard, fortunate to make that four pin. He, uh, he almost missed it, here, missing it to the right hand side, but just put the pin in just enough to make it. And that's all that counts as long as it goes down. Yeah, USB says uh, you don't have to hit it, just knock it over. And for our Bowl of the Year competition, I mentioned Moore's Pro Shop. They actually, um, whoever wins our Bowl of the Year competition, gets their choice of ball from Moore's Pro Shop, professionally drilled by. Uh, the pros at Moore's, Moore's Pro Shop. Uh, you can check them out. They're right inside Spare Time Recreation Center in Lewiston, Maine. As soon as you walk in the first set of doors, um, we got Scott Moore in there, uh, myself, James Goulding, Jimmy Clark, and Ken Moore working in there. And you know, we're all uh, we're all there to help the bowlers. So make an yeah. appointment and come in for your next next ball. Your Pro Shop is a big thing for your uh, bowling game. Uh, to be able to have some professionals and some guys that really take this game uh, to heart and really live and love the game. Uh, they put in their time in, whether it's with uh, the pro shop and drilling or cover surfaces. Surfaces are a huge thing in bowling today, or just in coaching in general. Um, coaches out there are only looking to help all the bowlers out. Uh, you watch these two bowlers here, and they put their time in. A uh, little bit of coaching here and there, and a lot of lane play. Patience, shot execution, everything adds up. Yeah, Joe, uh, going with something with a little bit of surface on it, moving into a part of the lane he hasn't played all day. He was he was in uh, inside third arrow that time, Jimmy. He's been really around 11, 12 board most of the day. So you can see with the mid lane start, starting to burn up a little out there, he goes to, it's a, I know it's a pearl. He's going to a virtual uh, gravity nano pearl, but he's got a little bit of surface on it. So that, that definitely, I think, uh, was a big move for him. It looked like it was the right move. Uh, the shot that uh, struck the pocket the way it did, pushed through the pins. You watch the ball do what it's supposed to do. I mean, the ball only hits four, so you've got to rely on everything working the correct way so the other pins do what they're supposed to do. Now let's see if he makes that same move here on lane 21. Made a big jump inside on 22. Let's see what happens. Well, there's a double from Joe Ramsdale. Uh, we're looking like we've got a match here. Joe Colcord bust the rack really well on the last two shots. Unfortunately, left the four pin two frames ago. But uh, we, uh, we've got a match here. These guys are both making spares, throwing good shots. Uh, we're definitely going to see this game come to the wire, James. Oh, absolutely. And that was that's a definite pressure ball right there. You, you look at the sixth frame. Um, you got Joe Colcord up by two pins. He had stone flush the shot in the seventh. 
Um, Rans Joe Ransdell comes up right after that. Hadn't thrown a double since the second and third frame and just throws two great balls in the seventh and eighth. And now Joe Cocor goes from a point where he had a two-pin lead. If he doesn't strike on this ball, he could be losing by eight pins. I'm going to tell you, James, that IQ tour looks great off his hand. Uh, he looks like he, him himself has moved in a little bit to try to uh, avoid some of the transition and maybe find a little cleaner through the front so he can ball and retain a little energy on the back and, and get those carries because uh, right now the carry is going to be the big thing. Plus, well, just it to me. You can tell what he was trying to do there is get the same look through the mid lane that he had two to three games ago when that ball was really motoring pretty good down the lane for him and giving him a good back, clean back end reaction. He's basically using the burnt up spot now as his, as his break point, where he was using that as his transition point earlier. So, big, big move by both bowlers, you know. Both bowlers moving in on the lane, and that's why there are one and two seeds. They, they know how to, when to make the move. Now, that's it right there, you know. Uh, to be able to be throw great shots is one thing, but to be able to make the, make the changes, make the adjustments, and uh, stay on top of your game, stay on top of the conditions. So, you know, the conditions are challenging, even though both bowlers today in this match are making the lanes look a little bit on the easy side. If you look at the scores right now, both bowlers have potential 240s, and uh, 240s are definitely big games for what we saw today. Absolutely, Jimmy. And now, again, after uh, Joe Ranzo had doubled about the pressure on Joe Colcord, Colcord steps right up in the face of that pressure and just laughs at it, throws two great shots. Now we'll see if Joe Ranzo can uh, trust that move that he made on 22 last time. He made that move deeper. Let's see if he um, trusts the move and uh, trusts it off his hand right here. Big shot. That is it. Got that one a little bit in and definitely read the lane. As you can see, uh, this is definitely not a, uh, a fresh shot here. The ball just read the lane a little early. And, I mean, he's fortunate to leave the six pin that the ball actually got to cross over, leaving himself a fairly easy spare. Although it does put him in a hole, he's still not out of the match with a spare here. That's right. Right now he's down 13 pins with a spare. Um, again, he got in just around 17 on that shot. Looks like he maybe didn't quite uh, follow through as well as he has been. Just grabbed a little on the bottom of the release. And again, when you make that move inside and you're playing a little more inside out than you're not used to playing, that, that's a natural tendency is to want to try to help the ball by grabbing it a little at the bottom. And all of a sudden, you're going through the face, and he's lucky to just leave a four pin to, to cover it up. Yeah, Joe, Joe uh, he's a good bowler. He's definitely uh, been someone who's been able to make shots. Uh, he's one of the best bowlers we have in the state of Maine. Uh, not to take anything away from any of the other bowlers here, but he's just consistently one of the guys to always watch out for when he's in a tournament. Um, unfortunately, on the, uh, we're fortunate with we some bus bowlers uh, on patterns like this. It kind of gives us a little more of a chance, keeps him, knocks him down a little bit. This is a guy that average, has averaged 250 or several different times uh, throughout the season. He knows how to throw good shots and he's very, very consistent and repetitive. With that said, I don't want to take anything from Joe Colquist because he is another guy that's averaged over 240 for a season. Yeah, they, you know, if you're, if you're cherry picking a list of, you know, top five bowlers in the state, there's the one list that isn't going to include both of these guys on that list. Now, with Joe missing the head pin here, he's kind of left himself with a fairly easy spare, but uh, spare strike only gives him two ten, which is only going to force Joe Colcourt to throw a spare and good count in the tenth frame for his victory. Now, remember, this is a tough shot, so the master, unfortunately, can strike at any time. Uh, Joe being the bowler he is, uh, uh, in my opinion, I feel he's going to have the confidence and the ability to throw a good shot when he gets his turn in the town. Yeah, this is a big spare for Joe right here. But he has to make the spare to have any chance of winning. He covers it. Now, if Joe strikes right here, what that sets up is Joe Colcourt, if he goes 9-0, can shoot 2-12. Best Joe Ramsdale can do, even with a strike, is 2-10. So, counts huge on this ball because, like you know, Jimmy, you can get a 6-7 count and all of a sudden you're in big trouble. Um, Ten pins here could be could be huge. Could make all the difference in the world. Uh, when you get tight matches, pin count is huge. Um, when you start bowling, qualifying, match play, anything, uh, anything at all that adds pins together, uh, count is huge. You can never take anything for granted in this game. That's right. That's a good point, Jimmy. Just because your guy hasn't missed the pocket in the last six, seven balls doesn't mean that he can't uh, let the pressure get to him and just grab one a little bit. There's a nine pin drop. That 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 could be big because now you know that. Maybe loosen his jaw up a little bit, uh, Joe Colcourt up a little bit. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Let's draw the picture. Joe Colcourt needs to throw a quality shot. I'm not telling you he needs to strike, but a quality shot in the pocket with a little bit of luck. Um, a nine count on the first ball is a victory. Actually, right now, Jimmy, an eight count gives him a 210. He goes 8 0. He's at 210 even. 
So look at the difference between just Joe Ramsdale getting nine instead of ten. Uh, eight count compared to a nine count, that's huge. Oh, that's definitely. And again, with the seven spare and Joe, you lost a couple pins. And like you said, unfortunately, one pin is one pin and it matters. That would be enough. That's it. Full courts and our, our champion of the first tournament of the miss this year. Yep, uh, great shot there by Joe. Um, you know, he you know he just needed to hit the pocket to win this game. Uh, that puts him at uh, 213, even if he misses the spare. Um, and uh, best Joe Ramsdale shot was 209. So um, no matter what, you know, Joe Cocourt takes home the first title of the year and uh, gets a foothold up on that bowl of the year competition. Yeah, it looks like he wants his title back from Joe Ramsdale. Uh, this guy, Joe Cocourt, has come out today. Both today. He topped our 30, 37 player field, um, performing well for all seven games that he bowled today. He did very, very well, staying clean, making spares, and throwing good shots. Not to take away from our uh, lefty and runner up, Joe Ramsdale III. Uh, I would say we're going to have a nail biter for the entire year for Bowler of the Year. The two of them being our last three season champions, uh, they're going to be at each other's throat, I'm going to have to say. Absolutely, Jimmy. I mean, you got to think these two are going to be there at the end. Um, but there's a lot of other bowlers out there. There was 35 other bowlers out there today, and hopefully more next month. I have something to say about that. But uh, so with that nine count, uh, Joe Colcord finishes a 224 to 209 victory over Joe Ramsdell the third. Um, for Jimmy Clark, this is uh, James Goulding. Uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you guys next month in uh, Waterville.